Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show on Talk Radio 1190. It's more than just mosquito talk. Mosquito Steve will talk about natural products, organics, good business practices, and more. And now, here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Show. Uh, We're doing something a little bit unusual this week. We're out at the uh, Mall of America. I'm here with the Krillies. And uh, hello, everybody from Minnesota. There's a big crowd out here. I'm signing autographs and... um, Anyways, they got huge mosquitoes up here, so <laughs> it's the state bird. <laughs> That's right. So no, actually, we're we're in the studio at uh, Jeff Crilly's office, uh, the Real News PR office. Uh, these guys have done amazing things for me. Hopefully, you listen to Jeff's show um, on eleven talk eleven ninety talk radio every Saturday at eleven a.m. If you don't, you need to. Um, there's some great business information on there. He's a great guy. I was I'm a huge fan. I, I he really was my favorite reporter. I'm not kidding. Not just buttering you up. You were my favorite reporter wow. for years on Channel 4. I watched you every night. It's so funny because it wasn't until you that I noticed that it's like there's one reporter that seems like is on every story, every big story. Jeff Crowley's there. There he is every time. And uh, now I think, well, let me see, there's Jobin Panicker for Channel 8. Right. And then um, who's the guy? On, I know the Channel 4. I can't think of his name. but yeah, uh, Brandon Todd does yeah, a lot of yeah, these yeah, stories. Yeah. Yeah. So it's this, but it's, it seems like it's saying that you were the guy. You're always there. And Thank so um, I was disappointed to see you leave. But now I'm so excited that you left because this has worked out real well for me. And Thank you. So we're also here with Jeff's daughter, Sarah. Hello, and hello. Um, so actually, I was going to ask, are y'all married? What's the deal? <laughs> so, no. so, but he looks like he could be my brother because he's so young. He does. Dad, he you does. never age. Well, he really did. He, we have had a couple of people say, is that your wife? And I'm, I'm flattered because, uh, you know, she's beautiful. But it also makes me look, appear to be younger. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think you're you're very young anyways. You Thank really you. are. Thank this you. is um I'm feeling quite old with with these folks here today. But anyways, we're gonna talk to Jeff first. We're gonna get to you in a minute, Sarah, because you are very important and, and honestly I was, but y'all are both great looking, but I, I think she's better looking. So, <laughs> yeah. I think I will not disagree. <laughs> um so I have to ask you because you know, I have a degree in broadcast film from SMU. Cool. I studied journalism. And I am in the mosquito business. So <laughs> right? how did you avoid the mosquito business? Now, <laughs> do, do you have a degree in journalism or is it in something else? So I went, I went to school uh, and I had signed up for journalism and they convinced me to move it to communications because you got a more well-rounded background. I, I could learn stuff about politics and economics. So my, my degree is from Michigan State and it's a communications degree. Oh, you're a Spartan. Yes. I love the Spartans. <laughs> hey, I am I am a huge when it's NCAA tournament. I just I love those guys. So all right. So from there, what, what got you started in this? How long were you with Channel 4, and where were you before Channel 4? So uh, my career history goes Lansing, Michigan, uh, Omaha, Nebraska, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So when you said oh the Minneapolis, oh, there, you know, yeah. the Minnesota State Fair, I was like, back at a home. <laughs> um, and then uh, Channel 4, uh, when I started there in 92, it was a CBS station for those who have been around for a while. And then in uh, 2000, uh, no, it was 1994, 1995 is when they made the switch to Fox. And I was there until 2008 uh, when I left to start this PR firm. Did you think they were going to survive the move to Fox? Oh, my goodness. Can I tell you a story? Yeah. So I'm on the grassy knoll um, because Jackie O had died. And, you know, we had to do the, you know, uh, Kennedy fans are mourning. So I'm on the grassy knoll. We had heard that morning that the station was sold. Now, taking you back to this time in history, in 1994, the Fox network was nothing. I mean, it was married with children and Bart Simpson and that's it. (laughs) They didn't even have football. I mean, they were just, they were nothing and they didn't do news. They only did two hours of programming a day from seven to nine in the evening, but nothing during the morning, not, you know, no morning shows. So, um, I'm standing out on the grassy knoll. It's about, uh, it's about two minutes till, till we go live. And the guy in the booth says, Hey, Krilly, did you hear we've been sold and we've been sold to Fox? And I said, no, no, wait a minute. I heard we were going to be sold, but I, we can't be Fox because <laughs> because Fox doesn't have news. And then I thought, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Fox doesn't have <clears throat> news. This is like I'm, I'm being fired. This wow. is, you know, they're going to completely disassemble the newsroom and 
I'm going to have to look for for work. So I did my live shot from the grassy knoll. You know, Sarah's a little baby at this point, a little, you know, maybe three years old. And, um, <laughs> and so I'm worried about my wife and family yeah. and how am I going to uh, you know, put food on the table. Get back to the station and then they, they say, okay, so here's the good news. Because Fox only programs two hours a day, 7 to 9 p.m., the cheapest way to fill programming is to let the news go long. So this is not a bad thing for the newsroom. In fact, it's a very good thing for the newsroom. In fact, we went from 90 uh, people in the newsroom to like 120 people in the newsroom, became the largest newsroom in the state of Texas. Wow. And here it is, fast forward, you know, 20 years later. Um, they're, they're winning in just about all of the time slots. Channel 4 is really doing a great job. Cowabunga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I do. I really, I've got... I like Heather Hayes, love Steve Eager. It is a lot of fun. And Mike Ducey. Yes. Oh, what a cad he is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. And 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 I like having my news at nine. For some reason it's got yes. me hooked. And I hate that because I really want my nine to ten o'clock hour to be free, but they've got me hooked. So uh um, so it's job. your fault. Really it's all do. your fault. <laughs> all right. So so anyway, so you're big time. You're in Dallas news and you're going with it and all that kind of stuff. And then what caught you on fire and made you decide to get out of it? So I wrote a book in 2002 called Free Publicity, A TV Reporter Shares the Secrets for Getting Covered on the News. And while I was still at Channel 4, I started this very aggressive pace of speaking 300 times a year in addition to my TV job. So I do a breakfast speech, lunch speech, go to work at Channel 4. Breakfast speech, lunch speech, go to work at Channel 4. I sold 70,000 copies of that book from the trunk of my car, just five at a time, ten at a time. And a business was born because people kept trying to hire me. They'd be like, man, I could buy your little $10 book, Krilly, but uh, I don't have time to do any of this stuff. Could I just hire you? And I'd say, no, I can't take your money. I'm, I'm on TV. I'll just tell you what to do for free. They'd say, all right, what do I do for free? I'd say, well, tell me about yourself. What, what, what are you up to? And they'd say, you know, I, I'm in the mosquito business. I'm like, oh, my goodness, with, uh, with you know, Zika or West Nile. I mean, you go crazy. Here, call up this reporter at this station. Tell him this, and you're going to get on the news. And then a week or two later, they'd call me up, and they'd say, Krilly, you're a genius. I'm going to be on the 10 o'clock news. And I realized, man, you're better at this PR <laughs> stuff than most of the people who do it for a living driving those fancy cars. <laughs> so in 2008, I got permission from my wife to quit because I was going to have to be on her, her insurance plan. And so I quit. I quit in May of 2008. And one month later, the housing bubble bursts and we go into the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. And it could have been very scary had I not laid the great foundation for a PR firm because there were 70,000 books out there declaring me the expert. Yep. So I never had a bad, a bad year. Um, I've grown it from just me in my bedroom with a laptop and a computer as a PR firm to now um, 16 employees. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's become a, a, a fairly good-sized PR firm. I have to tell you, I am... Uh, <clears throat> So I think I'm an easy story. I think, you know, obviously with Zika and You're all the story. stuff and, you know, with my history with this stuff, you, surely you meet people that want you to do PR for them and they don't have such an interesting story. I mean, what right. do you do? So uh, I've become very choosy. I don't let just anybody come into the PR firm. I have to know that we're going to have success because in my contracts, I put a money back guarantee. It's still in the contract, which means it would make no sense at all for me to bring somebody in who doesn't have a great story to tell. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's plenty of companies out there that don't have a great story and you know they don't need a PR firm. So a PR firm is not for everybody. A PR firm is for the person who w wants to tell their story to a, a wider audience, doesn't have the budget for advertising. Uh, advertising can be very pricey. And um, wants to attract people in a a way that's credible. So like, let's take the legal world. In the legal world, y you have a choice. You can either buy a bunch of TV commercial and, be and become the Texas hammer, <laughs> or you can, you can be interviewed on the news as an expert attorney commenting on somebody else's case. I would say to the average attorney, it's much smarter to go ahead and be quoted on the news as an expert than it is to try and buy all those TV commercials. So uh, it's not for everybody, but um, you, you, in answer to your question, I, I don't take everybody who has a check. So are you on, are you Pete Jolte's guy? 
<laughs> I just wondered because he's always yeah. on Channel Four. He is. You know what? I, I w- th- back in the day, I would give Pete Schulte free publicity because he was, um, you know, he's he was he was a good soundbite. I used yeah. to interview him when I was on Channel Four, and so uh, every once in a while, I'd see a story come along, and I'd call up Pete, and I'd say, "Hey, dude, do you want to be on the news?" And he said, "Sure," and I'd put his name out there. I wasn't getting paid by Pete, but I helped. I can't say that I'm. I can take credit for Pete. I think Pete would have done it without me. But there was, um, there were plenty of times years ago that I would help Pete out for free and get him, get him some news coverage. So I would imagine a harder problem because I've got guys that that I've worked with that are my service providers, and I have this problem. So I, I'm a harder problem is getting people to shut up sometimes. Like if you were Donald Trump's PR guy, what would you tell him? What I would tell him now is that he really needs to listen to his handlers, and I've been really studying him, and he's done well to this point because he's been shooting from the lip, and he caught America at a time when they were tired of politicians, and here comes this refreshingly honest voice. But now you're the standard bearer for your party, which means uh, you can't can't do what you had done um, to get you to this point. You've got to change your 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 ways a little bit and in fact he just fired his um, campaign manager so there's a big shakeup over at trump trump headquarters and um it's probably healthy for trump to take another look at how he's doing what he's doing he doesn't have to completely reinvent himself but he does have to somewhat um rein himself in or else he's going to go off the rails and um you know, he's got an entire party that is depending on him not going off the rails. Yeah, that was actually when when I first heard about him firing his manager, I thought, oh, well, the guy probably went in there and told him, okay, now on this next part of the campaign, you're going to have to shut your mouth a little bit and quit <laughs> spouting off. And he said, great, you're fired, you're out of here. And so um, I figured that's probably how it came down. I'm sure that's we'll never find out. So, um, okay, so one of the things that I noticed um, there, uh, uh, that you guys do on your website is crisis management. Yes. So that's one of those things. So, so tell me about what is your favorite thing? First of all, what's your favorite thing to do in the PR business? My favorite stuff, honestly, and I'm not saying this just because you're in the room, is stories like yours. Uh, so like um, uh, Mike Castellucci, can we tell the, the audience? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mike Castellucci from Channel 8. Um, just did a feature story on on you, and it was fun for me to call up Mike and say, "Hey, you know, Steve is a, literally a pin cushion. He <laughs> he he will to test his uh, all natural ingredients. He has to has to test it on somebody. Might as well be him. And he's been stung as many as nine hundred times in one night. And and you were there when I was making this yep. this pitch to Mike Castellucci, and he loved it. And um, he did a story on you. And and I think that that kind of stuff is really re- rewarding to to tell good stories to journalists and have them say this is a great story. And it is. It's it's the story I've been wanting told, so I'm very excited about it. So, I wish we had more time with you. I really do. Oh, I, it's you. not it's not fair that this is all we got. But fortunately, we've got your daughter here, and so now she's going to get to tell us. We're going to tell all the secrets about you <laughs> okay. while you're out of the room. So this is really going to be fun. So, anyways, thank you, Jeff, for being on here. I really appreciate it. listen to a show every Saturday at 11 a.m. 1190 Talk Radio and streaming on iHeart Radio. And we'll be back right after this break. is your source for eliminating mosquitoes using only mosquito steve all natural products new world pest offers the most effective solutions while leaving your yard safe for your kids and pets owner greg rummer was personally trained by mosquito steve and knows the best way to treat your yard safely and effectively New World Pest offers yard sprays for a general solution and misting to keep mosquitoes and flies from flying in. Estimates are free, so call them and they will provide a customized solution for your home. Call 214-815-6363. That's 214-815-6363 or visit them on the web at newworldpestcontrol.com. Real Texas. Real Talk. Talk Radio. 1190. Howdy, everybody. Welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Show. I am Mosquito Steve. I've got some awesome guests here today. So um, 
We just got through hearing from Jeff. Jeff's out of the room, so now we're going to talk about the secrets of Jeff Crilly by his daughter Sarah. Um, I'm also joined by Samantha Knight, who is our. Is it the right Samantha? Did I get the right? Okay, you got okay. the right one. Okay, so. Uh, uh, she's going to be talking with us here in a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit more about mosquitoes and about some other things. But I want to hear more about right now about Sarah. Why are you following in your dad's footsteps? Was this one of those things when you were a little girl, you watched him on TV and said, I can't wait to do that someday? Well, I would love to share because when I was a little girl, I thought everyone's dad was on TV. So I remember going into kindergarten and we were talking about what is every, you know, um, we were talking about jobs. And I'm like, but what channel is your dad on? Uh. And (laughs) so I just uh, took it for granted that my dad is famous and it was really cool to be able to watch my dad come in. And, you know, he really just when he talks, with his hands and just is so theatrical that's how you have to be on tv and it's the same same in person so oh my gosh that's how i grew up so do you have a degree in journalism or so my degree actually is in diapers because i had my son <laughs> caleb Good. who's now six years old and so i started off in broadcast journalism and then took a little break to have my son and blessed to be able to work with my dad's uh, company with real news pr as the managing director and i've been able to do a lot of on the job training and work from the best professor ever which is my father and it's incredible to see what he's done through TV news and bridging the gap from TV and PR and blending it together of how to find that right story for the client. Right. And it's incredible to see what he's what he's built and joining me here with Samantha is cool because we've been adding different services, not just to get you on the news, but also to help with the back end marketing as well. And we love doing that and sharing your story because it's hard to share what's going on with me in Real News PR. I always <laughs> want to pull out what's going on with Mosquito Steve because you really have changed personally my and my son's life, which I'll touch on in a little bit in this upcoming segment because thank God for your products. Well, that's and that's really what got us started uh, together is because, yeah, your son, so Caleb, is highly allergic to mosquito bites. Highly, highly allergic. When he gets stung by a mosquito, it will penetrate his skin and then swell up his entire leg will swell up and it's throbbing and he's hurting and it's oozing and it's disgusting and there's just nothing that my doctor could do other than you know spray on those repellents well it's horrible having to spray your kid with all these different mosquito repellents and DEET and I don't want him you know bathing in these chemicals all the time and so I found out about you and having these essential oil based that smell like vanilla and Caleb's always telling me reminding me even in the car mom let's put on mosquito steam <laughs> like there's no mosquitoes in the car Caleb <laughs> but he knows that he's going to be protected by your products and so it's wonderful that is to awesome. have that so he he still has these adverse reactions where they'll swell up and they're mm. they're red and hard to the touch and oozing and horrible and there's just nothing with these allergies um, other than like an EpiPen or something but it hasn't been to that point yet so so does that w- w- did you react same way or where he or no, his father I get, I get normal mosquito bites and I've compared notes with other mommy friends and it seems like the younger they are their little immune systems aren't you know, combating those allergies yet, and who knows? Hopefully, he won't. So, why didn't you just spray DEET or something like that on him? Well, so uh, mm. having my son, um, it was, you know, how do I say this? So, I mom free, judge free zone, right? But it's all about what organic, you know, food that you're feeding them, and do you vaccinate and don't you vaccinate, whatever. So, I'm not going to take a chance on the chemicals because I do vaccinate and I do try to do organic as much as possible. But this is something that I can really control of which product is better. Well, I would much rather take the less of risk approach of having an essential base all over my son than the chemical base. And for those mommy listeners listening, <laughs> judge free zone. But um, so, yeah, I, ju- I just love your products and they're fantastic. Well, thank you. So, so now that you've connected chemicals and public relations, I have to ask you. So, <laughs> because here's the thing. So I, I just watched this documentary this weekend, and it was about uh, the 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 uh, the stuff that PR agencies do with chemical companies and stuff. Now, sort of like what they did with tobacco. So when I was growing up before y'all's time, back in the '70s, these the tobacco uh, big tobacco companies, the presidents and CEOs were on the news saying. Oh, you know, there's no evidence that it really kills people. You know, smoking doesn't hurt people. And they were literally saying this with a straight face. They stood in front of Congress and told Congress that. And you had all these 
these PR guys, the super PR guys were actually going to work for these companies. And so they would they would have no science behind them, but the scientists would get on there and go, you know what, this stuff really kills. The doctors are saying this stuff really kills. And they're going on, oh, none of these studies really show that they kill people and all that. It was just an amazing PR machine. Now, um, a lot of those guys are working for the chemical companies. It's it's interesting. You can follow their paths and guess where they've gone now. Isn't that interesting? So it really is. And so we're having the opposite problem. We're having the opposite battle. And and so that was just made me really aware of that now that we've how do we get how do we beat their PR machine with our PR machine? How do we let people know, you know what, guess what? Don't listen to them. These are the same guys that told you it's okay to smoke. Don't listen to them. It's not okay to be spraying chemicals on your body, in our yards, on our food. You know, you if you're eating a strawberry from the store or a green bean from the store, it's covered in pesticides. Mm-hmm. It's covered in them. And so how do we beat that PR machine? Well, and relating it back to being a mom, too, with that PR is like, gosh, you just want the best for your kid, right? And the same thing for the world. We just want to be as healthy as possible. And so I think education is the first piece. And we are in that all natural now. It's it's a trending thing with the more information that's out there and what chemicals can do and really harm your body. People are aware. People are really aware. And thank God for products like yours, Mosquito Steve, because they're out there and we're behind you trying to get that message out every means possible and you're all over the news and you have your show now and so we're just gonna scream from the mountaintops mosquito steve and all natural (laughs) safe effective repellents you know what as a matter of fact on the way here so i've had like three calls this morning everybody wants to talk for 30 or 45 minutes to me i just i don't have the time anymore i just don't there's just too much not enough for me to go around i finally figured out what to do I'm going to say, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to write your question down, and I'm going to talk about it on the radio on Saturday. I love that. Isn't that that a great idea? I love that. And say, tune in on Saturday, and you'll get your answer. You know what? You're going to have to wait a few more days. Because, like, I had a lady. So uh, so this is is to address a call I got this morning. This lady wants to know she's got mosquitoes indoors. Well, I've seen more mosquitoes indoors in the last couple of years than we have in a long time. How does that happen? Well, Well, I'll tell you what happens. Typically... There's uh, these are bigger homes and there's somewhere there's a bathroom they're not using. Usually, you know, one sitting in the back or a shower. There might be, you know, maybe you use the bathroom in this one, but you don't ever shower. So you've got a P trap underneath that shower where the water just sits and sits and sits. Wow. So it's sitting there stagnating. Mosquitoes fly in there. They lay their eggs. The mosquitoes are born. You got mosquitoes in your house. And so, um, so if you have a bathroom you don't use, you need to go run that water every once in a while. And if you'll do that, that'll wash the eggs and that'll wash the mosquitoes. You can always take my spray on repellent or something like that and spray around the drain and stuff like that. Any of my products you can spray in the house. They're, they're fine. So you can pour those down in the drains. That's what I do. I, um, I'll, I'll spray my garbage. I'll spray anything where there might be. I spray, you know, plants. Um, I don't like little mites and the little flies and stuff flying around either. So, you know, sometimes I, sometimes when I get my fruit in, you know, I'll, I'll spray it and then rinse it off. Uh, I just cannot stand having those little flies flying around the house. I can't either. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't have the mosquitoes. And so, uh, but, but I get that a lot. Uh, my dad's wife will she she sprays it under their bed she sprays everywhere with this stuff and fortunately a lot of people love the smell of this um i will tell you i got and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a little bit but the first time i got this stuff that's going on with me this illness stuff um i thought it was a spider bite or a kissing bug bite and so uh, what i did was i sprayed my entire bedroom down with my spider repellent and so it smells very much like this other stuff and and it actually it wasn't that you know it wasn't bad it didn't bother me at all but i i mean i sprayed top bottom of the mattress all the linens everything with this stuff in every corner of the room and i haven't you know i know i haven't got it's really interesting i don't know that this started with a bug bite uh, but i will tell you i used to get bug bites a lot um i bought a mattress from i'm not going to name the company on the air but i bought a brand new mattress from a company and they were just jerks to deal with and uh, in fact they actually stole some stuff from my house when they delivered the mattress 
Oh, yeah. My, these glasses that I have on right here, they stole these. What? Yes. They stole my prescription glasses off of my, and it's so bizarre. And I, and I called down there. I said, there's no, there's only one possible explanation is that they're down there. Well, yeah, of course they had them in the drawer down there at the supervisor's office in the warehouse down there. I'm like, going, so tell me. So if, first of all, their warehouse in like Seagave says, well, you can come down and get them anytime you're ready. I was like, um, excuse me? <laughs> no, you need to get them back to me as soon as possible. And anyways, they made all kinds of promises and didn't do anything. But they got my glasses back. But it's like, how do, how do you accidentally pick up somebody's glasses? No. That doesn't happen. They were stolen. That's but horrible. I have a feeling that the bugs came from their warehouse down there. Neglectful. And, and so, um, so I was getting these bug bites, these, you know, these big welts like you were talking about on Caleb. And I'd find them all over my body, um, sometimes two or three in the middle of the night. And uh, and so when I got sick, I went, oh, my gosh, that's, that's what's happened. So I sprayed everything down. So um, so it is safe to spray my products indoors. I will tell you that. That's what's great. But we're not here to talk about me just yet. We're going to talk about me in a minute. But we've only got to cut another minute. So <laughs> might as well talk about me because we just got another minute. Okay. So, uh, so, anyway, so when we come back, though, I have a few more questions about the PR business. Because sure. It's I, I love this business. It's you know it comes natural to me. I enjoy it. It's one something that I would have enjoyed doing, uh, but you know it's hard for me to find interest in a lot of people. And I know for me that would be the challenge because most people I'm like you know I'm really not interested in hearing your story <laughs> at all, and I'm pretty sure nobody else does either. So um, so I know that's got to be a real challenge, um, and and that's why I never know if y'all are being real with me. Do you no, really this care? Is, you have is this to love people organic? to be in is this industry. Really? Absolutely, and every day is different, and every day is fun and a challenge. And the challenge part, you have to have fun in the challenge. Okay. And just embrace it. All right, all right. Well, we're gonna study that a little bit more when we come back. So, uh, anyways, uh, enjoy the break, and uh, we appreciate having you guys around. Uh, thanks for listening to the Mosquito Steve Show. We'll talk to you in a minute. Howdy, welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Show. I'm here with my wonderful guest, Sarah Crelly, and also Samantha Knight from the Real News PR folks who are absolutely amazing. You guys, I, honestly, they didn't ask to do this. I wanted them to do it because they've done a great job for me. I really appreciate them, um, and, and I appreciate this business altogether. So, Sarah, I have to ask you, I asked your dad, I want to know, so what is your favorite part of this business? People, working with people. It's my passion. So Absolutely. Gross. And finding out the stories. And then we have a multitude of services to get the story out. And so that's so fun to be able to fit the puzzle together. And Samantha sitting here next to me can attest to that. It's just so fun to start and find out what their story is and really take it from my dad's perspective of a TV reporter. Well, what makes this newsworthy? Right, Samantha? Oh, yeah. And I, my favorite part is that every day is different. I mean, there might be some day where I'm chained to my desk doing emails, and then there's a day like this where I'm in the studio recording, or I'm at an event somewhere. It's just so much fun. And we're running out and on the scene, breaking news, and it's <laughs> really fun. State Fair of Texas is a fun time. That's coming up. We're going to have to make up with the State I Fair of Texas. I, yeah. I we're can't, Cowboy I can't think past month. Saturday right now. <laughs> I'm so stuck. I'll just get me to Saturday. If I can get through Saturday, I'll live. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I don't, I, I would love to be chained to my desk, sending out emails. I need to be at my desk sending out emails. No. I'm so far behind. <laughs> it's not that fun. Well, it's not that fun to be running around either when, cause I, I still, it's their emails are waiting for me. See, that's, that's the deal. But you know, I, the, the, we're, I'm at that point right now where it's just me, you know, I need a staff. I need people working with me and stuff like that. And so what's great is you guys have been able to pick up some of these things so I can kind of, you know, um, push some stuff off on y'all and let y'all help handle some of this. And honestly, sometimes it, it works too good. I've just got too much going on. But, you know, like Mike Castellucci called it at uh, 6 o'clock yesterday. And I had, I had a full day plan today. And he called at 6 o'clock and said, I'd like to come, you know, do the interview at 8. You know what? I feel like crud right now. But it was like, I can't pass that up. Can't pass it up. When so the media comes knocking, you have to yeah, answer absolutely. every so, time. So, and what's great is, is then when he said, you know, well, I'm not going to say what, but anyways, it, it's going to be on this Friday, which is really, really critical for us. And we're going to be all over Celebrate Recovery on Saturday. So, um, hopefully the phone's going to be ringing off the wall next week. If I can just get somebody to be sure and answer them, it'd be great. So, um, 
can you talk about the structure of the way y'all do things here because this is different i will tell you so when i was looking for public relations because i know i know that my story's got an angle and got some some interest that you're not going to find anywhere else and so i've asked public relations companies for proposals and they were wacky i mean they're starting off with before we do anything you write us a check for thirty six thousand oh, dollars wow. then you're going to pay you know this for this and it was just enormous i couldn't believe it i could not believe you basically you're starting with you know 50 to a hundred thousand dollars just to get started and and it never felt right you guys can you talk about your structure and how y'all do things here and all? absolutely so um and again my dad's priced it where he really does appeal to the small business owner so you don't have to have the thirty thousand dollars a month to be able to afford a pr firm or a huge advertising company um, but how we work is we get our clients on the news but then with what samantha and i do behind the scenes is making sure okay now you're going to be in the news and you're going to have all this exposure to your company. Well, we want to make sure that you're looking good on the inside out, right? So what does your website look like? Do you have your contact information on there? Do you need some videos to tell your story? Because you got the hook of this really cool media credibility that you were just on Fox 4 or you're just a national publication sometimes that you'll get on. And then people are going to stalk and try to figure out, okay, well, do I really want this company in my life? And so what we're doing is we're trying to get the story out there on a multitude of different services through social media, through your website, through videos, through SEO, which is search op engine optimization. And I'm learning something new every day in this company. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so that's the structure is it's not just traditional PR. It's also that behind the scenes marketing that we're doing for our clients and we're so passionate about. And technology is changing and we're trying to keep up with that too. Social media changes all the time. First it was Facebook, well MySpace and Twitter and Pinterest is new and Instagram and clients come in and they're trying to figure out well what should we be on and how active should we be and so we work with them on that too and trying to stay ahead of the curve. Snapchat is something that's really interesting right now. All of these different media outlets are even using Snapchat and that's people are wanting real time on demand content all the time. It's not changing. It's getting faster and faster and faster. The closer you can get to your uh, smartphone device to be able to keep up with it, it's just racing against the content. I, I, you know, and I know that's important. It's still very sad. It really is very sad to me that we spend so much time looking at our phones and that that's where people are getting their information. And it explains a lot too, to me, because people are not as well informed as they used to be. Now, I think every, I think there's more people that have a little bit of information but there's a lot less people that have enough information is is the problem i see and so there's because you i tell you what if you ever want to watch some funny you know the the what is it the lie new why lie witness news that jimmy kimmel does yes i love that or, i do too well how about or jesse uh what's his jesse the guy on fox news jesse um dang it uh, i can't think of his name anyways hilarious and he does these interviews with these people and they are so clueless they they simple things like you know, what do you think? Who's our vice president? How about that? Who is our vice president? Simple question. It's Please true. tell me. People are more Samantha, obsessed. who's our vice president? Oh, it's Joe Biden. Okay, okay. All right, people all right. are obsessed been, with uh, but people don't reality know shows. The Kardashians yeah. yes. are always on top yeah. of media. But these people, they're voters, though. That's the thing. These are people that are helping shape where this country's going, and they don't even know who our current administration is or how the country runs or anything like that. And the, that's, it's really sad. So um, one of these things here, because here's, I do think Mosquito Steve is going to be a billion dollar company someday. I think I'm going to have some resources. And when I do, that's what I want to do. I want to, I want to take some money. I want to form a foundation and we're going to go out there and we're going to try to inform the public better than what they're doing right now. We got to figure out a way to break through and uh, get some information to them. So Boy, we were, that was not a plan. I don't know how we got off on that, <laughs> really. It was, uh, but at least we didn't start talking about politics. Hillary versus Trump. Which one is that? <laughs> so um, so I have to tell you, so when I was looking again, you know, I was having all these. I keep getting this microphone. I'm not used to this one. But uh, when I was looking for PR firm, um, sent out for proposals and all that, and then I found PR Newswire, and I thought, well, oh, my gosh, I can write my own stories and just put them out on PR Newswire because that's what they try to get you to do, right? 
And so um, obviously it did me absolutely no good. So tell me about some of the challenges in, you know, that you face today, like with your competition and what's out there now and, and how do you get, cause you've got to have the same problem I do. You know, I'm having trouble getting past the chemical company publicity. How do I let them know that natural products can work? How do you let people know that there's a better way to do PR? Sure. Well, first and foremost, it is those critical relationships that we're building with our media relationships. So my dad being a former journalist speaks news, eats, sleeps, breathes news, and has that already relationship to where when he picks up the phone and the rest of our employees do too, that, you know, we've seen things on the other side of news and I'm Jeff Crilly and I know what you've been through and I have a story for you. And they're able to speak journalists and get that story covered. The same thing with the employees that we have, they know that they need to see our clients through that media lens and if the media cares or not about their story. Some of the challenges that we have with our clients is telling them, okay, not that you're ugly, your baby is ugly, but that story isn't a real story. We're going to do this <laughs> and make it a little bit prettier and the media is going to like it. It's the same story. It's just pitched a different way. And so there are definitely some challenges. Also, um, when we get them news stories, it's not always going to be a big commercial like 50% off skincare. It's going to be a story about why the sun is, you know, hurting your skin and that there's these products to help you or so on and so forth. And it's not about here's the special going on. The media doesn't care about that. The media cares about the news. And it's almost kind of a no-brainer, but it's hard when you're, you're in your company and you're really trying to get your story out there. But fortunately enough that we have that insight to be able to get your story told just in a little bit of an easier way to get it covered by those better journalists that that really do need a story and they need stories all the time and the more that you can build that relationship with a journalist they'll be able to answer your phone call day in and day out when they really need a good story yeah and to always when you get covered by a journalist that wants your story make sure you get their cell phone number text them with the story they're always needing something especially if it's a breaking news piece and you fit in somehow all right, so I've got a, a sister and a friend that have amazing businesses. They're uh, both they're both female. They both are presidents of their company. They're really really cool. They're not going to benefit a lot from, you know, a lot of public relations out in the city of Dallas. But I would love for them to have a way to tell their story. Um, so one of them, in fact, she runs a spring manufacturing business in Garland, and it's it's twenty five years old, or maybe they just celebrated 30 years i think 25 well congratulations to she, them That's she a long is time in so business. classy she is miss victorian collects antiques and yet runs a spring manufacturing business and and it's fascinating story and they they double their size you know every few years really their quality is always number one it's just incredible very very good story what would they do because it's not going to help them. Nobody in Dallas is going to go, oh, well, great. Now I know where to buy springs. Uh, and, you know. <laughs> so that's a great question because there is that perception, okay, you have the media that you've got that, wow, you are on the news. But something that's better and more effective more oftentimes than not is having videos created or just using your smartphone and turning it around and here you are on Facebook Live and telling your story. Do it in so many different facets that we have with this connected world that we live in now. You need to tell your story, print, try to get it out there, type it out, you know, email, send it out to people, go around speaking. There's definitely a different places that you can get plugged into to speak and tell your story. I'm a Rotarian and part of the District 5810. They're always looking for great speakers with stories just to know about what's going on in their community. And I would love if that's the city of Garland that she lives in, I can connect her with hopefully a Rotary Club president over there that wants some of those cool people that are in the community to tell their story. And then again with videos, and I touched on Facebook Live, but Facebook Live is that kind of real in time where you're gravitating towards your network or Periscope is through Twitter. Those are all social social media ways that you can get plugged in. And then, of course, your website. You need to tell your story on your website. Oh, their website is absolutely amazing. It's one of the prettiest websites, believe it or not. Um, I'll tell you about it. You can go check it out. Is there a scaled-down version for companies like that? Because, I mean, they, it, they couldn't possibly justify spending what I spend. Is there a scaled-down version for somebody like that to just do some – speaking some industry absolutely. news some local stuff okay absolutely. that's what i was hoping and to i love that you're leading into web because that's what samantha really does cover too 
that Good. we talked about last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. So when we come back, cause so, cause so Samantha's also got, she's got, she was spending the night with a bunch of girlfriends. They had a pillow fight, and she's going to tell us about this story. And oh, wait, <laughs> mosquitoes that, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> we were using the pillows to swat them away. It was, it was a disaster. No, she has a mosquito story to share with us. And then um, I want to talk a little bit more about this industry specific thing because I think you guys, both y'all, um, especially because it is, it has changed. The web has changed everything, obviously. Um, and the phones have changed everything. So there is a lot that people can do. And I want to make sure that people know that there is uh, there's something you guys can do for them. Um, so you don't have to just do, I mean, I am, I'm all over the place and, and, uh, I know I'm an easy story cause I'm, I'm crazy. I'm literally crazy and that's what <laughs> makes it happen. All right. We'll be right back on the other side of this and I look forward to hearing from these guys and thanks for listening to the Mosquito Steve show. Hi everybody. This is Mosquito Steve. Uh, this is our last segment. And so we get a little bit nutty this time of day usually. So, um, anyways, I'm sitting here with Sarah and Samantha. Samantha has an exciting story to tell me about mosquitoes first. She's been, that's, I got to hear this story. So something about she plays tennis with mosquitoes or something. I do. Well, I, I play in a group and uh, we play all around the Dallas area. And, you know, any tennis court, it's got a lot of shrubbery around it. Usually golf course. Shrubbery? Shrubbery. Uh, you know, ponds and things like that. And uh, I carry Mosquito Steve with me everywhere I go. And Aww. I know. And so I'll spray it down and I'll, does anybody else want to spray? Don't rub it in. Just spray it lightly. And if I don't, I get eaten up by mosquitoes. Just, wow. I don't know what it is about me. They love me. And I'm not one of those people that gets a bite and then it goes away in a day. I'll have a hard red bump for like a month. And last week we walked to dinner. I didn't have on any Mosquito Steve. Got eaten up. I can't wear dresses now for like another month because my legs are just... Wow. Yeah. Actually, I don't think you might be looking at your bumps, but okay. Not only are mosquitoes such a nuisance, but also to, gosh, you can't even they're, wear skirts right now. They're ruining my of, fashion yeah. life. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was one of those things I should have just, you know, whipped it out of my purse and sprayed down, but I didn't. And now See, I'm stuck is, in pants. This is what I tell me. Look, you just spray your ankles. You know, you don't have to cover yourself. You don't have to smell like a bunch of mosquito repellent. Just get your ankles sprayed when you're going outside, and that way you know you're covered because that's typically, that's where they're going to go first. It is, and and I, I don't do like a full body spray. I usually hit my arms, each of my arms and each of my legs, and just kind of walk through the mist, and that yep. seems to be enough unless I know I'm going to be somewhere that's just, you know, super mosquito-y. Then I'll do like a full body spray. Super mosquito-y. I yes. have to remember that word. Maybe we should use that as our slogan. Ah, it, super mosquito-y. It's super mosquito-y here. You know, when you're walking through a cloud of mosquitoes. It's so you did, you also said you, you carry Mosquito Steve with you everywhere you go. And I thought, oh my gosh, we should make a Mosquito Steve plush doll. <laughs> so people should. could carry Mosquito Steve with them everywhere they go. And Absolutely. it would always remind them to wear mosquito repellent. Repect your, repect, rep, rep, protect protect yourself. yourself. Repect yourself all the time. Somebody make my words come out right. Protect yourself all the time using Mosquito Steve. There we go. So, so all right, you play tennis. I do. So how old? Not are, well. Uh, do you mind telling us about how old you are? About in about. The, uh, I'm about thirty three and. Are you three really? Quarters. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my gosh, you look like you're twenty seven. I right? love you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so what, what have you, always, was this, were you a professional, were you a college oh, player? Gosh, were you, no, uh, I just started playing in the last couple of years oh, okay. um, to be less fat. <laughs> uh, you're just running back and forth nonstop until, you know, you're done playing. So yeah, it's great exercise. I love it. So how did you two meet? Did you just interview her? Yeah. So oh. she came in as a web designer and we okay. were so excited because she quickly went from web designer to lead web designer, managing that entire service that we have at Real News PR. And I'm like, wow, she's so organized. She's like my better half because I was in operations at that time. And so Samantha and I were meeting pretty frequently and she was helping me get organized. I'm like, oh my gosh, you would be great in operations. Now she's tackling video, of course, the websites, social media, graphic design speaking all these other services samantha keeps under wraps it's fantastic in wow. operations and she makes us all look good i try y'all need more people though you do because when you need we have people, 16 people i know it's just amazing Isn't but amazing? when you need people y'all need 25 people and then i imagine there's times when y'all don't have enough for 25 people to do 
Or does that ever happen? Oh, there's always something for us is to do. And that's why we do take on just a very small Sorry. amount of accounts now because we really want to make sure that all of our clients have individual attention. And so we do have a cap of how many we can take. Okay, so I come into the office every time and there's this table, there's like six desks together sitting out in the middle of the floor. And there's six people there. I'm not even sure I've met them all. Oh, yeah, 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 there's Amshi. And uh, yeah, so, I, okay. You know what? Now that I see their faces, I have met them. You know who these people are. That was funny. Y'all sounded like the NPR (laughs) girls from Saturday Night Live. We did a disc assessment (laughs) one time, and I guess with the disc assessments are just your different business profiles of what personality type you bring to the workplace. We found out that we have mirrored each other's disc profiles but she has one missing piece and i have the other missing piece so we're almost twins now at this point <laughs> I'm, wow. I'm stability compliance she's stability influencer so she's everyone's friends and i'm over here with the checklist like mm-mm, no see so the can't fact that other. you've had a chance to even take that test tells me y'all don't have enough to do <laughs> oh no it was it. very important because uh company culture is very important I'm sure and so we could go a whole thing into see, that that's, and that's that's why i I have no idea how it's going to happen when I start bringing in people. I don't know what we're going to do. I, you know, I, I know that I can't do more than I'm doing right now. And so I don't know where we start plugging people in. And that's what, you know, I'm hoping I've got help that's going to help me figure all that out. Absolutely. But, it's all about the team and the people um, and that yeah. they're there to help the vision of your company. The most important thing when you're bringing on new people to your company is that they know your vision. And so you'll be able to vet them out from there if they share the same vision that you do and that they want to help you achieve your goals and that they're the right fit. Yeah. And so it's that's key. That's I everything th- right I there. I think it's really, really important to know what you're – strengths are and what your weaknesses are and I, that sounds like very like interview 101 but if you know that you're not uh f- for example i'm not really all that personable i disagree eh. uh. but <laughs> <laughs> See, i do you give me hugs now samantha used to Aww. not hug now she's a hugger I'm, I'm I'm actually, hugger. That, that is really good to know because i thought maybe you just had a like a thing for old men you didn't like like I like I creep you out. So she that doesn't just want to repel cool. mosquitoes. I don't, I don't like anybody. Repel everyone. <laughs> okay. um, but so Sarah- I don't like people either. <laughs> I don't. I like mosquitoes because I know what they're going to do. I've never had a mosquito stab me in the back. You know that I wasn't With asking for it. <laughs> well, what I was asking for it. You know, people will do it, and when you're not asking for it. So uh, no, no, I've never. I trust mosquitoes more than people most of the time. I really do. <laughs> well, you you always know what they want at the very Absolutely. least. Absolutely. It, it might be your blood. I you know the 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 like your blood. <laughs> you know, and so um, so really it, it does come back down to that because you guys are helping me tell my story, and I think it's, it's really, really critical. Um, this is a passion for me, and that's the thing. Is I think you guys caught on right away where a lot of people haven't that there is an angle here and that, that I am different. It's funny because we did, we had a couple of news teams, TV news come out and they do these interviews and then they would do this story about, oh, here's another guy going out to try and make money because of the Zika virus and stuff. And it's like, how do you get that out of my story? I don't even understand that. I am nothing like that. That has nothing to do with what I'm doing. I'm not trying to make money, first of all. If I'm trying to make money, I'm very (laughs) stupid because I've been doing this for free for 14 years. That's what I'm trying to tell people. Look, who do you know that's worked at something for 14 years for free just because they're passionate about it? And that's the bottom line. And the passion has been to get the truth out there. You know, I'm tired of the, the chemical companies telling people that it's okay to put this stuff on your kids, to put this stuff in your yard, to drink it, to eat it, and all the other stuff we're doing. The second thing was it's ridiculous that the best forms of mosquito control cost so much money. It's ridiculous that a family of four living in Hamilton Park can't afford what a family of four in Highland Park can afford. You know what? Everybody needs to be able to afford mosquito control. So we're bringing the cost of mosquito control down. And then finally, that you know, it's natural products. Natural products do work. But here's the thing. This is like the big message now. This is the thing. So some of the biggest misting companies now are actually looking at doing yard sprays. And so they're testing my products and they're loving them. They're loving them. And so, but the problem is, is that, you know, they're, people are calling and telling me, I got a call this morning. Oh, this big company, I'm not going to say their name. You know, we're getting rid of them. Their product doesn't work. And I had to tell her, here's the thing. 
their product doesn't work because that whole concept doesn't work. It's not their product in particular, but you can no longer just mist a yard. So I'm sorry to say, folks, if you've spent a bunch of money on a misting system and it's not working, guess what? Misting alone does not work. You have to do something to get the mosquitoes out of hiding. That's the bottom line. So you have to do those yard sprays. Try once a month at first if you can, and then if you need twice a month. You can always, I've got do-it-yourself products, so you do it. But it's a two-step product process. You get, you get them out of the yard, get them out of the air. And so that's kind of been the message, and people don't want to hear that. It's expensive. It's really expensive. You know, the most cost-effective way to protect yourself from mosquitoes is spray repellent on your body. That really is. That's the best way to do it because you know that you're going to get covered. Here's the sick. This is my tip for the week, okay? Tip Let's hear the, the tip of the week. Da, 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 da. Where's my fanfare? Come on, sing something. Tip of the week. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Okay, tip of the week. Here we go. When you spray mosquito repellent on your body, do not rub it in. Oh. Do not rub it in. I knew that already. The first thing, especially with females, the first thing they do is they spray a little bit here and a little bit there, and then they rub their arms together. Like it's, it's like, a fragrance. Yeah, like who does that? I don't get it. I is do, because it, it, it thing? smells like vanilla. Okay, so every time I did a test, I actually tried doing that with every single product, with the DEET products and with my products and the other natural products. It cut the efficacy in half. So if it would work for, if it was 75% effective, you do that, you're talking about a less than 40% protection that you're getting once you do that. Oh, geez. So, yeah, so right. you do not want to rub it in. You want to spray, spray directly. First. Spray directly. Yeah, if you're just going outside for a little bit, you're like me and you want to be protected and smart, at least spray your ankles. It's the easiest, simple way to do it. Then you don't have to have it smelling in your face all the time, but at least you're protected. That's generally where they bite me is around the ankles. So I feel very confident when I put it on my ankles and I'm out working that, that that's going to cover me. Um, obviously, if there's thousands of mosquitoes flying around me then i'll do i'll step it up and do a little bit more uh, but here's the thing folks zika and west nile are here they're going to be here all summer uh, west nile is really here uh, zika is you know not localized yet but west nile is localized um, they have found pools with west nile in it so you need to be protecting yourself spray your yard mist in the air put some mosquito repellent on do not take a chance with your kids and if you're pregnant don't take a chance you do not want any of the pathogens that mosquitoes carry out there so be sure and be protected and um, if you have questions you can always call the office go to mosquitosteve.com that's mosquitosteve.com or you can call 214-520-0041 I will probably, I got to tell you, I typically answer the phone at nights and on the weekends, which is really weird, but that's fixing to stop. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm sorry to say, um, I'm going to have to get professional here because I, I can't handle it anymore and I need a break. And so uh, anyways, uh, but listen, we appreciate y'all listening. We'll be back in next week with special guests um, and uh, tell, our, tell all your friends, tune in to iHeart. Uh, talk radio 1190 streaming all the time and uh, of course you can listen to 1190 AM talk radio every Saturday at 1 o'clock